Hi, I'm Matt Winning, and today we are going to talk about a blast from the past, and that's weight releasers. So there's a lot of different ways we can train. We can train with straight bars and straight weights. We can train with chains. We can train with bands. We can train with bands from the top called the Lighten Method. But one you don't see very often is the weight releasers. Now, as far as I know, these are one of the first ways that anybody had played around with accommodative resistance. And how it works is that you're gonna hook a weight onto the bar and you're gonna lower that particular weight to whatever height that you want. We're gonna show that in a second. So let's get to it and I'll show you guys how to use weight releasers. All right, so weight releasers are pretty simple if you look at them in design. They basically hang on the bar and then at a certain distance when they hit the ground, they'll come off the bar. Now what that does is allows more eccentric loading, more power on the concentric. In my personal opinion, I think the, the power to weight releasers is that the body, central nervous system wise and tissue wise, doesn't understand that when it gets to the bottom it's lighter, it's gonna try to react to the same eccentric force concentrically. So let's say we have an extra 50 pounds on the bar on the way down, the body's gonna think that it's gonna have to push that on the way up, okay, just by how we're designed mostly tendon and stretch reflex. So by adding this, you can do more weight on the eccentric phase, and that therefore will give you more power on the concentric phase. The other thing that it really does though, and I think is the most important, is it kind of changes the mode. So when we're doing a, a um, weight releaser type lift, we're actually getting something heavier on the way down and lighter on the way up. How could you do that in a different scenario? I don't really know. So the point is you're changing environments. So I'll lay down and show you how this works. I have these weight releasers set, maybe whatever weight on the bar that I want. Right now it's just the bar just to show you. I'm gonna select my grip and then I'm gonna take it out. Now as you can see, if I'm using only weight releasers, this gets very rocky and very unstable. Now as I'm going down, this right now weighs 50 plus 45. So it's 95, 95, 95, 95, 45, 45 up. Now, the reason that I think that this particular exercise is so powerful is that most people mentally are already gonna duck out or stray away if something feels too heavy on the way down, right? I mean, usually most great strength coaches can tell if a weight's gonna come back up by how it looks on the way down. Now, obviously the deadlift starts at the very bottom and has to stand up, so that's not possible. But on the squat and the bench press, you have to lower the weight before you raise the weight. And I would say that 90% of the time, I can tell in the beginner, intermediate, and sometimes even the advanced, if somebody's gonna stand back up with that weight based on how it looks on the way down. So that means that we know that on the way down is very, very important to making sure that you get the lift. I think central nervous system wise, if you're used to handling 50, 75, maybe even 100 pounds more on the eccentric phase than you are on the concentric phase, you can psychologically already beat the weights, plus you're using and storing more kinetic energy in the tendon and the muscle tissue, therefore giving you a better chance to hit the weights. the weight releasers are a vital tool. We don't use them a ton, but we do use them fairly regularly. And the reason is, is that it's just hard to replicate that in true environment with free weights. So using weight releasers should be a part of your program. It's an easy and cheap way to use accommodative resistance, and it's one that I don't think you see very often. So put it in your program and see some bigger results. Delts, rhomboids, lower trap, a great posture exercise. This is a central nervous system deload. So we're actually gonna deload the brain and the spinal cord and we're gonna overwork the muscle tissue. 